Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Experience the message that broke the internet, the Eternity Message, by Apostle Michael Orokpo. Discover the 12 incredible rewards of eternity revealed in this life-changing sermon. Understand the eternal impact of your faith and devotion. Witness the promises of everlasting joy and peace. Celebrate the ultimate reunion with loved ones in the presence of God. Don't miss the Eternity Message, a revelation that transforms your perspective on life and beyond. That be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. See, all of us will not shine the same. The level of illumination the level of brightness, the level of intensity you carry is directly proportional to your labor on the altar, to your labor with the world, and to your labor with soul winning. So when we get to Zion, don't make the mistake of thinking that they will they correct you with glory because you are called a prophet, because you are called an apostle. There are many prophets who know nothing about the altar. There are many apostles who know nothing about the business of the world. There are many, many, even worshippers that know nothing about soul winning. And we are floating in church in and out. We think that has an implication in eternity. No, it doesn't. And you may not know the value of clothes until you go there. Like I was telling you last week, Tuesday. Hope you know, a goat does not know the value of a suit. If you put a suit, well, <laughs> here we are not funny people. I was in the UK the last time and I saw people carrying dogs. They dressed the dog with clothes. <laughs> you see dog, they kit the dog up with clothes and some solid garments. And the dog, even though the garment is expensive, the dog is uncomfortable. Because clothes does not mean anything to the dog. Give a baboon clothes, it doesn't mean anything to the baboon. But you, because you know clothes has relevance in your realm. Even among clothes, clothes have difference. There is a suit that can be sold for 10,000. There's another suit that can be sold for 1 million. And there is a suit that can be sold for 10 million. And when you wear them, the difference shows. And it's not just about price. Even color of clothes has an impact. If you wear black, you can sit anywhere. When you wear white, you put yourself together. That's to tell you that what you wear has implication. Now, if clothes are that relevant in a mundane world like this, think about reality. How many of you can come here if you were not clothed? So you didn't just come here because you knew the location. You didn't just come here because you have sense. You came here because you have clothes. If you don't have clothes, you will hide in your bedroom. Nobody can see you. So a man without garment will live in the realm of shame. And so the degree to which you ebb away shame is the degree to which you are covered. He said in Exodus 28 verse 2, Make garments unto Aaron for beauty and for glory. So your beauty in eternity, your honor in eternity, your majesty in eternity is tied to the degree of glory that you carry. And there is a way glory is transacted. He said they that turn many to righteousness in eternity, he said they will shine like the brightness of the heavens and like the stars forever. They that trade in the place of prayer, he said they shall be clothed with their heavenly tabernacle. And he said they that engage the world, they shall be metamorphosed into the likeness of the spirit that they see. So the degree of glory we carry in eternity is our choice. What we do in intimacy. This is why the devil fights your intimacy because he is scared that every time you engage God, something happens about your glory and it doesn't want you to be glorified does it not occur to you when adam fell the bible said for all have sinned and falling short of the glory of god what happened when he fell when he heard god he hid himself because he was afraid there is a shame that brings fear that is a shame that men who don't have glory carry but when you are clothed 
you can stand before God. You can participate in Zion. This is the first reward that God will give to people. And the Bible calls these kinds of people overcomers. That means no distraction of the world, no cares of this life, no sin was able to separate you from God. Paul asked the question, he said, what can separate us from the love of God? Because he knows the value of this thing in eternity. What can separate us from the love of God? He thought and thought and thought nothing was found. I pray for somebody today, the power for your intimacy to be re reactivated is released upon you now. Christianity is not about church attendance. It's about relationship with God. Because that relationship sponsors glory. And glory is a reward of eternity. Glory will not just be dished out to people carelessly. You don't win souls. Another person labor to pray, to give, and to win people into the kingdom. You expect that you come to God and he will give you the same glory that he gave that person. No, that's not justice. He said, God will not be unjust to forget your labor of love. It depends on what you do now that you are alive. The second reward of eternity is a name. <laughs> and I wish, <laughs> you know, in the kingdom, name, the meaning of name is deep. In the natural, names are for nomenclature. Nathaniel, yes sir. Michael, yes sir. Godwin, yes sir. That's not kingdom. When you enter the kingdom, names are not for nomenclature. Because in the kingdom, you will know as you are known. That's how it works in the kingdom. If I see you, I will know you. Peter did not live in the era of Moses and Elijah. The moment they appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration, they recognize them spot on as Moses and Elijah. You know as you are known. So name in the kingdom carries dimensions and authority. That's why Jesus himself had to be given a name. In Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to verse 9 because these names are earned. They are a reward. They are not uh, a gift. They are a reward. Even if you are given a name, if you don't pay the price for that name, you won't answer it. Because in the kingdom, names are symbols of authority and dimensions you can be committed with. So you must earn it. I was teaching you about the name of Jesus here the last time. And I told you, every time an Israelite or an Israeli person has an encounter with God, he credits that encounter with a name. So that any time that name is called, that dimension is reactivated. Because names carry dimensions. Names carry authority. And so every name a man is called in the kingdom is end. Only overcomers qualify to receive names. And even in the natural, we saw the example. Philippians 2 from verse 5. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse, next verse. These are the things Jesus went through to qualify to be called Lord. He said, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Next verse. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What now happens? Next verse. Wherefore, that means the name he's given is a direct consequence of the price he paid. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. Now, what is the implication of that name? Is it to, to call him? No, he said, at the name of Jesus. Next verse, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and under the earth. So the name he was given 
is to be able to exercise lordship. And so the reason he's able to exercise lordship is because a name was given to him. He said that every tongue should confess that what? That Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he cannot exercise lordship without that name. And that name is not a gift. That name was end. The same applies in eternity. When we get to eternity, something will happen to those of us who will be overcomers. Hear what the Bible said. Hmm. Revelation. Chapter 2 verse 17. The names you are bearing on earth, you may love it, but we will not know you after those names in eternity. So thank God for Matthew. Thank God for Enoch. Thank God for Moses. Thank God for Martha. Thank God for Magdalene. Those names are nomenclature. The names that will give you authority in Zion, you will earn it at the end of time. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He said, To him that overcome, I will give to it of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save him that receives it. This is what will determine your status in Zion. The name that you will receive. And so, where you will stand in eternity is a function of your name. Because names are passcodes to ranking in eternity. Revelation 3, 12 and 13. Same emphasis, reiterated. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. So you are seeing that this type of people will have a stand in the courts of God. And he said, and I will write upon him the name of my God. The name of the city of my God. Which is the new Jerusalem. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him a new name. So not everybody will stand in the courts of God. It's only those who earn certain names that will stand there. That's why Gabriel showed up and spoke to Zacharias. He said, your wife Elizabeth shall be with child. And the man doubted him. And the guy looked at him. He said, I am Gabriel. <laughs> oh God. It's, not an, it's not a nameless angel that is talking to you. He said, I am Gabriel. I speak to you and you doubt me without consulting God. He said, you shall be dumb until when this thing happens. He is spending from where he is standing. So, if you want to have authority in eternity, you need a name. This is why you can't joke with names. Names are not for nomenclature. If you can't pass judgment without a name. Because when you say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. That the king of glory might come in. They will say, who is the king of glory? We want to know by whom's authority you are making this proclamation. And when we get to Zion, all of us will reign with him as kings. That is why he needs to give all of us our own passcode. So the second type of reward of eternity is a new name. And the kind of name you are given is what determines your authority. The question now is, what then is the basis for having a name? I tell you quickly the basis for which a name is given to men in eternity is their ordination is your calling everyone who is born was given a calling the type of name you'll be given is dependent on how you execute that call that is on your life this is why those who are negligent about their calling are taking a great risk because that will be the basis for them to be named even on earth when God gives a man a call of necessity he gives him a name to sustain that call because there is something about ordinations and names look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verse 5 he said your name shall no longer be called Abraham but Abraham, because there is an ordination on your life 
to be the father of many nations. So ordinations necessitate names. And that's not all. Look at Simon Peter. In John 1 42, your name shall no longer be called Simon, but Cephas, which is to be interpreted Peter, because you shall be a rock, because of his calling. A man who floats up and down cannot be the leader of the apostles. So the ordination warranted a new name. And that's not all. Even Paul was previously called Saul. Acts 13 verse 9. But when he entered his calling, Saul could no longer suffice. And so the Bible said Paul, who was also called Saul, because he needed a new, a new name that can warrant that ordination. And that is not all. The sons of Zebedee, James and John, Mark 3, 17. Jesus changed their names to sons of thunder. Your calling demands certain names. And so when you fulfill those calling, names will be attributed to you as an eternal reward. So in eternity, they will know us after the dimensions that we carry. So some of us may be sons of light. Some of us may be door openers. Some of us may be city takers. But it depends on what you did with your call. This is why you cannot allow your calling to be dormant. There are many people who get offended because they didn't treat them well in church and they left and their calling died. Are you joking? Who told you ministry ends on earth? Ministry does not end on earth. Ministry continues into eternity. Did you not read about Moses and Elijah? After they went to Zion, on the Mount of Transfiguration, they came back as elders. Moses represented the law. Elijah represented the prophets. And they were coming to submit their testimonies to the kingdom. And they were telling Jesus what he will do in Jerusalem. Because the work does not end on earth. You are called as an intercessor. You are called as an apostle. The project of earth might end, but the project of God continues. He is the one that sits in the cycles of eternity. And when we complete our calling in this phase of existence, we become participators of the next agenda. Can I show you a scripture? Revelations 22. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, hey. Revelations 22 verse 9. He said, Then said he unto me, See, see thou, do it not. Because when this guy was carrying John around heaven, showing him things, so when he finished, John wanted to worship him. He said, No, don't do it. John thought he was a, an angelic functionary or even the Christ. He said, no, see thou that thou do it not. He said, for I am thy fellow servant. Another version said, I am thy one of your brethren. He said, for of and of thy brethren, the prophet. So this is a prophet. But this guy finished his prophetic ministry and became a messenger in heaven. And John went to heaven and the guy was carrying John around heaven. John thought he was an angel because he was clothed. <laughs> the glory he wore is not the garment that you wear on earth anymore. He had taken off the earthly and he has put on the celestial. So when he, John saw the glory, John mistook him for one of the elders of Zion. He said, no, I am one of thy fellow servant. I am one of thy brethren amongst the prophets. So prophets don't finish their ministry on earth. When you finish your ministry on earth, you translate to your ministry in eternity. And most prophets who are accurate become elders. That's why Moses and Elijah came back as elders. So you may have a calling. You are thinking it's about the body of Christ. The, the body of Christ is a measure of the call. The real call is who you become in the assembly of Zion. Because we will continue serving in the world to come. Did you read Revelation 14 verse 4? Open it and see. He said there are those who follow the lamb everywhere he goes. So we don't follow him only on earth. Even in eternity, we keep following. He said these are they which were not defied with women. He said for they are virgins. He said these are they which follow the lamb wheresoever he goeth. He said these were redeemed from among, from among men 
being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. So these are people who have a calling of consecration and they kept it. Some of them Matthias, some of them Levites, some of them Nazarites. They refused to be defied. The Bible said at the end of time, they will walk with the master as his soldiers. Everywhere he goes, they have access to go there because they kept their ordination. So this thing does not end in time. You can continue to order a young. Why do you think angels have names? An angel comes to you and says, I'm Gabriel. An angel comes to you and says, I'm Michael. Those names are signatures of service. So even after their era was over, they became messengers to other dispensation. Who is Melchizedek? He said, he's without father. He's without mother. That means he's not talking about God. Who is he? When you serve and you are done, another assignment is handed to you. See, some of us will be messengers in the world to come. It doesn't end here. Did you not read? The Bible said, those who overcome, he shall give authority over nations. That means in the world to come, some will become governors. So in the world to come, there will be rulers of cities. Even though they have become just men made perfect. Because ordination continue. But the signature of authority you have to continue your ordination is the type of name that you'll be given. This is why whatever assignment God gives you now, die on it. There will be multitude in heaven. No? Don't be lost inside them. It's not enough to go to heaven. <laughs> Oh Lord of hosts, the King of glory, Yahweh Sabaho, Yahweh Sabaho, oh Lord of hosts, the King of glory, Yahweh Sabaho. Yahweh O oh Lord of hosts, the King of glory. Yahweh Sabaoth, Yahweh Sabaoth. O oh Lord of hosts, the King of glory. God raised some of you as prophets and then you gave word of knowledge to two people and because one or two people know you you already compromised you don't know the world to come if you know the honor of the age to come you will reject anything men give you some prophet compromise for fame some compromise for money some compromise for relevance others compromise for position which position can equal to become an elder in zion that means it's already an honor to be called into the lineage of prophets your focus should not be the most accurate prophet your focus should not be the most popular prophet that when you are also done with your assignment you will line up behind abraham you will line up behind the Elijahs. You too will become an elder in Zion. Who told you? See, when people see what we do, they don't understand the substance of our passion. They think you want to be popular. Oh God, some of us are intelligent too. If my focus is about popularity, I won't be here. I won't be here. I know what to do for my name to explode in one week. There are certain controversial things. If I touch it, internet will explode. If I even begin to project my personal life, I can add drama. Everywhere they'll be watching me. Go and check my page. I only put kingdom stuff there. Maybe once in a while I'm doing birthday. I just we are not push. See, we know what to do, sir. You think if I start a series now and I'm showing people about my relationship and family life, it will be millions, millions, millions. If I begin to deal with controversial issues or touch at things now everybody want to hear what i said but that's not my focus everywhere you see my my platform or anything about me is the word of god i project only the word and i'm satisfied 
People say they think you are ambitious, you are passionate. If I am ambitious, sir, I won't be here. Those who are around me know the opportunities that come. I've been to see, just face your calling. You know why Jesus said concerning apostles, He said they will sit with him on thrones to judge Israel. I want to become a judge in the world to come because why prophets become elders, apostles become judges. That's why even on earth we judge things. So my goal is not to be the biggest apostle in time. You can be the most popular apostle in time, but you may not make it as a judge in Zion. So those are the things we pursue. We know that ministry transcend time. And we want to do ministry even in the world that is to come. Because there is a name that you can be given that will give you access to serve even in Zion. Oh Lord, of host looking only name you will bear because by the time your journey is completed God will give you a new name you will qualify for a new name you will be part of the overcomers that will be given a new name so that your relevance will transcend time I prophesy over you everything trying to make a mess of your ordination they go down now please hear me the glory of ordination it's not popularity. It's a body. You are not yet popular. That's why I think it's a big thing. It's a body. From people who assume you are a millionaire and every day they are begging you for money to not having your privacy. People badging in on you all the time. It, if you are not even focused, you will lose your calling. Popularity is a body. That's not the goal for the nation. If God tells you, sit in one room and pray till you return to Zion, do it with joy. The excellency of ordination is the name you will qualify for at the end of time. What will God call you? What will he call you? When he gathers his servant and he looks at some and says, faithful servant, what will you be called? That's what we pursue. Your calling may be to, to help the needy. Do it with all your life. Take dressing from people like Mother Teresa. Give yourself to it beyond what men can give you there is a name waiting for you in Zion this is why every one of us must be about the master's business there is a name we contend for and you will not miss your own sit down for a moment eternal rewards number three is the tree of life or the hidden manna revelations 2 Verse 7. Hmm. Yahweh. Sabah. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He said, To him that overcometh. He said, Will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God? To him that overcometh. He said, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Verse 17. Reiterated, Revelations 2, 17. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, 
You are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.